Future Champions 2016. And that this is where now I think that, you know, things did start to get a bit better now in terms of uh, matches now. Uh, on uh, on Clash of Champions, I think this was where now you did start to get more, you know, good matches now. And this was, again, just another good match here, which was uh, Cesaro versus Sheamus in a singles match that was actually uh, in a best of seven series, which if you remember, you know, this feud back in 2016, you know, that Cesaro and Sheamus had a best of seven series, but this, but it ended up, being tied at, uh, at three at three wins uh, each for both Cesaro and Sheamus, that it ended up being a draw uh, in in the best of seven series because the match went to a no contest because I think they ended up like brawling or something to the outside, and I think uh, you know for some reason that you know it just ended up you know turning into like I think just yeah just into a brawl. Or something like that. I think just something happened. And the match went to a no contest. So it was again a pretty, you know, bad way for for the for again for the best of seven series to end. But like I said, I mean most of their matches though were were, were pretty decent in this, but ultimately again that the fans again were behind Cesaro at this point because this was again still around the time when Cesaro was still big in WWE and where people again were really, you know, where Cesaro again had the popularity around this time. And that, like I said, and that people again thought this was a bit of a waste of a feud against Sheamus really for Cesaro. I mean, like I said, for for what these matches were, you know, they weren't, you know, too bad. But again, this was around the time where a lot of fans again wanted to see Cesaro pushed as a single star. And again, because, you know, he did again. You know, because again, he was just over, like I said, this year. Because in this year, he actually uh, came back. He actually returned the night after WrestleMania 32 Cesaro because he was out with an injury. And uh, and then he, uh, he came back, yeah, for the night after WrestleMania 32, where he, uh, in a fatal four-way match that I think uh, determines the number one contender to face Roman Reigns for the WWE Championship at Payback. And that um, and that AJ Styles ended up, you know, winning that match. But yeah, and Cesaro just came back and just got a really good uh, reaction. But ultimately, again, you know, and like I said, he did uh, compete for the United States Championship. He did uh, go after the US Championship once or twice. But really, like I said, he didn't, again, get too big of a push. And then, like I said, he just got put into this feud uh, with Sheamus into, like, this best of seven series because Sheamus wasn't really, you know, doing too much at this time either because, you know, this was after, again, where the, the League of Nations uh, faction that Sheamus was in had uh, had split and that Sheamus was, again, just put into this feud with Cesaro. But ultimately then what happened after this was that Cesaro and Sheamus, like I said then, this would all end up with them, like I said, forming uh, a tag team and ending up becoming the bar, which again was ultimately, that's what ended up happening after this, you know, after their feud was that then they would end up forming... Uh, the bar well becoming a tag team ending up being paired together as the bar and then they would you know win the raw tag team championships uh like i said twice i believe but and, and like i said and, and like i said they were quite good as a tag team together like i said i suppose but again you just feel that again for cesaro this was a really you know, this was a year, like I said, where he really, again, should have been pushed Cesaro. But again, it's, again, still like now with Cesaro, where, again, he's in the, that tag team at the moment. He's still teaming up with Shinsuke Nakamura on SmackDown. But yeah, but so for as I said, though, this match, though, like I said, though, was, you know, a really good match just up until, like, like I said, when the match went to a non-contest, which again, it did, like I said, ruin the ending to the match and it really ruined, again, it kind of, again, lost its, uh, 
its appeal then to, to this best of seven series and it really kind of just made it a bad ending to this to, to the best of seven series that Cesaro and Sheamus had but again it, you know it did still last it did still go on for over 16 minutes but yeah but again for what it was it wasn't you know too bad but you know it was a good match up until where like I said where it went to you know a non-contest when it went up well when it went out for a non-contest and, uh, I mean, yeah, so it was decent for what it was, though, there. But Cesaro, again, should have beaten Sheamus. I mean, Cesaro, again, probably should have won the feud overall against Sheamus. But, again, it was what it was. And then, like I said, in the end, they would end up becoming a tag team out of this feud that they had out of this best of seven series because again they didn't want Cesaro to go on and be a single star and continue his you know push because again that's why they just wanted to put him in this you know put him in a tag team with Sheamus but again it is what it is though and I mean like I said that there really isn't much to say more about this this match so let's just move on then to the next match of the night which was uh, Chris Jericho which was uh, Chris Jericho up next who took on Sami Zayn in a singles match and uh, and Chris Jericho ended up uh, defeating Sami Zayn by uh, by pinfall uh, which lasted uh, 15 minutes and 22 seconds. I mean, there isn't really a lot to say about this match. I mean, at this time again, this was of course when Chris Jericho again was reinventing himself. And at this time again, this was when he started with the list of Jericho around this time as well and all that. I mean, this was again one of the best runs that Chris Jericho went on in the WWE and that would again eventually lead up to again being his uh, his last run in the WWE and that he uh, he took on a uh, Sami Zayn here like I said at Clash of Champions 2016 and that again we would see again Chris Jericho uh, later on in the main event of Clash of Champions between Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins uh, for the Universal Championship. So again, we did again still see Chris Jericho uh, later on, but he defeated Sami Zayn, I think by a co-breaker, I believe it was. I think it was by the co-breaker um, to Sami Zayn. And uh, I mean, yeah, but you know, for what it was though, again, I mean, it was two, two Canadians, you know, Sami Zayn and Chris Jericho here. And I mean, yeah, and again, I mean, like with Sami Zayn around this time, I mean, he again had a very, uh, he came off again that epic, you know, sort of match with Kevin Owens at WWE Battleground, uh, you know, back in uh, in the summer and all that. But then Sami Zayn just didn't really do anything other than that feud that he had with Kevin Owens. Uh, which again was again one of the best you know feuds that happened you know back in 2016 well one of the the the, the better things that happened and that's like i said really all that Sami Zayn did because again just like with Cesaro you know his potential you know like i said this year was also you know wasted but he was you know drafted to raw in the uh, in the brand extension and like I said, him and Chris Jericho, like I said, had, you know, a good match, you know, for what it was. I mean, like I said, it wasn't again, like I'm just saying, it wasn't again a great match. It wasn't, you know, a great match. But again, for, but considering again that, like I said at this time, that Chris Jericho was, like I said, getting on to like 40, you know, 44, 45 at this time. But again, this was again only still four years ago and Chris Jericho was still in his mid-40s around then. So again, for him to still get, you know, a good match out of uh, Sami Zayn, to still, you know, to go out there and to have a decent match with Sami Zayn was, uh, was good. But like I said, there just again really wasn't anything going into this match other just then it was kind of just made. It was kind of just set up by... By um by Mick Foley, like I said, to happen at WWE Clash of Champions between 
Chris Jericho and Sami Zayn because again that none of them were again were really you know doing anything else like I said really or Sami Zayn wasn't doing too much but again that's why he just had this mini feud you know with Chris Jericho after again he had his you know feud with Kevin Owens but yeah but as I said it was what it was but again Chris Jericho, you know, got a decent no win though, and he ended up, you know, beating Sami Zayn. So, in a way, again, you could say that this did sort of hurt Sami Zayn because that again, it didn't really, you know, benefit Sami Zayn, you know, losing to Chris Jericho. But then, like I said, at the same time, you know, Chris Jericho again would, like I said though, end up, you know, getting this win because, as I said later on in the main event of Clash of Champions, he did end up uh, coming out in the main event. And uh, I mean, yeah, but we'll get to that in the minute. So, yeah, so like I said, there was uh, that match. So that was the fifth match of the night. And now to the final three matches. So, yeah, those were both, uh, like I said, they were both the non the two non-title matches that happened at WWE Clash of Champions 2016, those were both the non, you know, championship uh, matches there. But then, like I said, we then had the three uh, big matches then that took place at WWE uh, Clash of Champions. These were like kind of branded as the three, you know, main event matches uh, here at this uh, Clash of Champions that were announced. So first up, you had Charlotte Flair, who at the time was the Raw Women's Champion, who took on both Bailey and Sasha Banks in a triple threat match for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. And, uh, and that Charlotte Flair ended up defeating both Bailey and Sasha Banks after that she got a pin four on Bailey with a big boot. Well, with the big boot, with a big boot uh, to, to Bailey and it knocked off uh, Sasha Banks off the ropes. So then she ended up uh, then pinning, pinning Bailey to get uh, the win and to, uh, to retain the WWE Raw Women's Championship from, ba uh, from uh, you know, to end up retaining it over both Bailey and Sasha Banks. And again, this was again around the time, as I said, where again, where the women's division was uh, again now starting again to evolve. And that this was where now that it just again would start to be more noticed now when you would have again the women's uh, revolution around this time with Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks having their, you know, series of matches. But yeah, because basically uh, this match came about because just after SummerSlam, Bailey made her main roster uh, debut on Monday Night Raw, and that then um, she would then end up being uh, put into uh, into a triple threat match with Sasha Banks and Charlotte. Because at SummerSlam, Sasha Banks uh, faced uh, Charlotte for the Raw Women's Championship, and then I think you know Charlotte Flair won. I think I think she uh, she beat uh, Sasha Banks. And uh, so then, like I said, then Bailey was added into the mix and she was added uh, to to make it a triple threat match here. Just again, she was again kind of just randomly thrown into this match because, again, ultimately this feud again would all be again would all be to do with Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair because they would go on the next month at Hell in a Cell then to main event WWE Hell in a Cell 2016. Both uh, Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair inside uh, Hell in a Cell to be the first ever women's main event of a WWE uh, pay-per-view at Hell in a Cell. Inside a Hell in a Cell match that Charlotte Flair would uh, would win, like I said, and she would beat Sasha Banks. So again, all this feud again was to do with uh, Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks. And again, that's why, again, that Charlotte pinned Bailey because, like I said, they didn't want, again, Sasha Banks to lose her momentum 
and all that because again of what would happen but again the match again this was again the, like I said a, a good you know triple threat match though between these three and that again obviously that again they go back to their you know NXT days together to when they were in NXT and that as the four, the four horse women with you know Becky Lynch at, and all that so again that they, they again and like I said that these three you know had you know good chemistry in this match you know in this triple threat and even though that again the rivalry again was more down between Sasha Banks and Charlotte around this time that again it was again more about them too like I said but again to add Bailey still into this to make it a triple threat match was again still you know good for what it was but like I said it was just a good you know triple threat match although there was I think one or two botches I think that came in this match though as well but like I said you know Charlotte Flair again would end up uh, retaining the Raw Women's Championship and this was again around the time where a lot of fans again didn't really like Charlotte Flair either and that they wanted you know uh, you know Sasha Banks as I said to be the Raw Women's Champion that Sasha Banks was the, was the favourite around this time I think out of you know the three of them out of you know well, out of, you know, that they wanted, you know, Sasha Banks, as I said, as the Raw Women's Champion at this time. So, I mean, but yeah, but as I said, you know, and it was the heel again who Charlotte Flair was at this time. That again, she was just so full of it and she was so annoying and so, you know, just so kind of pandering to the crowd and just, I mean, yeah. But like I said, though, these three again had a very good, you know, triple threat match, had a good uh, triple threat here. Considering just again that, like I said, you know, that they kind of just throw Bailey into this to make it a triple threat between Charlotte Bailey and Sasha Banks. So it kind of, you know, was what it was. But again, it was a good, you know, triple threat, though, for what it was. And uh, yeah, so there we are with that. So we have that match. And again, that lasted 15 minutes and 28 seconds. But again, it would again continue with uh, Sasha Banks, like I said, uh, getting another rematch, like I said, at Hell in a Cell uh, next month to main event Hell in a Cell against Charlotte Flair. And uh, inside Hell in a Cell to be the first ever women's Hell in a Cell match in history and the first women's uh, main event, main event, main eventing uh, a WWE pay per view. Which again, so that was again a, a unique moment and a special moment for both Sasha and Charlotte. Again, that would happen at Hell in a Cell. And so, yeah, but there we are with that. So, again, that's what would happen after after this match. And then moving on then on to, uh, to, the, to the penultimate match of WWE Clash of Champions 2016, where, uh, where Rusev, where Roman Reigns uh, took on Rusev in a singles match for the WWE United States Championship. And, uh, and where Roman Reigns then defeated uh, Rusev, who again at the time was the United States champion with Lana to end up uh, becoming, to winning, to capturing his first US uh, championship in his career, Roman Reigns, and that this would be the first of two uh, United States uh, championship uh, wins. Well, this would be his first time winning the United States championship and uh, and the second time overall because he did you know win it again Roman Reigns but uh, but yeah and this was uh, in a singles match and this was again the only title change that came at a uh, Clash of Champions 2016 as well now you know like I said the match for what it was you know it wasn't a great match here between Roman Reigns and Rusev but it was okay for what it was but that ultimately again it was about you know getting the United States Championship here onto Roman Reigns and again this was just another reason for WWE again to kind of to kind of uh to kind of you know push Rusev back 
like I said. And again, to take the United States Championship off Rusev. And so, you know, there we are with that. But again, this was a big moment, though, for Roman Reigns. Although, like I said, it probably, again, does get a little bit forgotten about, I guess. Because not many people do remember that Roman Reigns won the United States Championship here at Clash of Champions 2016. That this was the first time that he captured the US title in his career but again for what it was the match you know was average again it wasn't again anything special between these two but they would end up you know having a match also at Hell in a Cell uh, in October the next month where that would be inside a Hell in a Cell because they would have three Hell in a Cell matches there. And so again, the, you know, yeah. But Roman Reigns uh, beated Rusev. So they had a better match at Hell in a Cell. But I mean, yeah. So Roman Reigns then beated Rusev. And again, like I said, this was still the time where Roman Reigns again was, again, just being, uh, you know, pushed down people's throats. But at least again, that again, he wasn't competing again for the Universal Championship at this pay-per-view. So again, I suppose in that terms, it was refreshing. But, uh, but there we are with that. But again, he captured the US title. And uh, there we are with that. And he defeated Rusev. And then on to the main events then of WWE Clash of Champions 2016. And the first main event then, which saw uh, Kevin Owens taking on a uh, challenger, Seth Rollins, in a singles match for the WWE Universal Championship here which would be the first time that the Universal Championship then was defended here at uh, WWE Clash of Champions 2016 after the tournament. After, I mean, sorry, after Kevin Owens had won the Universal Championship in a vacant uh, Fatal 4-Way match with, uh, with Seth Rollins, uh, Roman Reigns and Big Cass to end up uh, winning it. And becoming uh, the first, the second uh, Universal Champion and to win it. Because basically again, uh, the, again, basically this match again, you know, wouldn't have happened. Because uh, Finn Balor again was the first, uh, you know, Universal Champion. But again, we all know what happened leading into this match. And we all know that plans changed with this main event because it was originally probably going to be, you know, Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor for the Universal Championship. But again, the plans had changed and Kevin Owens ended up being in this spot, but that he ended up winning the vacant Universal Championship in a fatal four-way match. And then it would then end up leading to Seth Rollins uh, then finally turning babyface, that this would be the start then of his uh, babyface turn, that he would have then the, the, the next week on Raw, because Triple H ended up uh, turning on Seth Rollins, and he ended up giving Seth Rollins a pedigree, and that was again really, like I said, the only kind of build up to this match. But then, like I said, the next week Seth Rollins uh, went, you know, would would attack Kevin Owens and would cut a promo to then basically, like I said, to uh, to then become a baby face in that to then. You know, to, to turn babyface and to go after Kevin Owens for the Universal Championship at Clash of Champions. And again, to lead up to his run of facing Triple H at WrestleMania 33, which eventually would happen uh, down the line. But again, for the first main event, though, that we got for WWE Clash of Champions, I would say this was the match of the night of WWE Clash of Champions and I would say this was a really good match here between Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins and that a really good spot in this match actually came where Seth Rollins actually did the suck it uh, to Seth Rollins and then did uh, a frog splash did like a splash through the table onto uh, Seth Rollins 
and uh, which was a really cool spot though, like sort of halfway into the match. But then in the end, uh, what ended up happening was that Chris Jericho interfered. Chris Jericho came back to interfere and he helped uh, Kevin Owens to defeat Seth Rollins to, uh, to retain the WWE Universal Championship. Which again was again a cheap way for Owens to retain the US Championship. But this was the time, like I said, where Owens again was just a, um, you know, he was just again being a chicken, you know, shit heel at this time. And that this was when he was just getting all these, you know, cheap wins, just getting these, you know, wins where he would have help. And again, he would get someone to help him to retain the Universal Championship, which again was one of the reasons again why his Universal Championship reign again does get again a little bit again of it does you know that that's why his reign was a bit flawed when he was the Universal Champion and, and again like I said he would end up you know ended up being squashed by Goldberg at Fast Lane to to lose the Universal Championship after this but yeah but like I said this was definitely though the match of the night of WWE Clash of Champions and there and there we are guys so that is it then for my review of WWE Clash of Champions 2016 my look back of Clash of Champions 2016 now the overall I am going to give the pay-per-view a 7 out of 10 I'm going to go back and give this pay-per-view a 7 out of 10 because you know looking back at this Clash of Champions although that it wasn't a great show although that it wasn't really memorable to be honest with you and that it wasn't a quality show or that it wasn't you know a great you know um it was, again, the first Raw-branded pay-per-view. And again, it was a little bit rushed as well with the main event and all that, with the way the main event came about and things. Because, again, it had to be changed up, like I said, and the plans were changed going into the main event. But again, like I said, for what you had, though, on this pay-per-view, that, again, you had good matches. You just had good matches on this show, you know, on on this uh, pay-per-view again from, again, the likes of, you know, uh, Chris Jericho and Sami Zayn up to the 